Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's 7 p.m. Uh, let me call to order the meeting of the Merrimack Planning Board for January 4th, 2022. Before we begin our business, let's all do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You made it? You just kind of. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let's um, see. Let's appoint Nelson into a voting position tonight uh, in for Lynn's seat. So that gives us five voting members. Um, I wasn't here last time to welcome our new member, Brian, but welcome, Brian. Welcome aboard. Nice to meet you and nice to have you aboard. Um, let me remind everyone who's going to address the board tonight to make sure the microphones are turned on and you speak clearly into them. Although we can hear you very well here in the room, the folks at home on video cannot hear without the microphone at all. So make sure the microphones are turned on. Um, applicants and speaking members, uh, the public, uh, please clearly identify yourself for the record. We are preparing minutes from the recording. Um, and so we need to have a name and if you're associated with the um, application and address uh, for the record. Our next planning board meeting after tonight is January 18th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Matthew Thornton Room, which is this room. That completes our call to order items for tonight. Robert, do you have a planning and zoning administrator's report for us? Just that the Merrimack Premium Outlet site plan is not of regional impact. All right. Board members, the staff's recommendation that the, Ma the Merrimack Premium Outlet item on our agenda tonight is not of regional impact. What say you? Nelson. Yes, I would move that it is not of regional impact. Is second. there a second? second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero to uphold the staff's recommendation on regional impact. That brings us to item three on our agenda, which is Chris Ross as the applicant and 702 Daniel Webster Highway LLC as the owner. And it is, it is a conceptual discussion regarding an alternative proposal to the currently submitted extended stay hotel application, uh, which is proposing a self storage facility. The parcel is located at 702 DW Highway in the C2 General Commercial District Tax map 7E, lot 23-1. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Yeah, just by way of summary, uh, as the board recalls during the last meeting, uh, there was a, pro a site plan application presented for an extended stay hotel. There were some unanswered questions about that application. So since that time, the applicant has come forward requesting this meeting to present a concept for a self-storage facility at the parcel instead. Self-storage is permitted in the C2 district as a conditional use permit. Um, no plans were provided to us at the time for review, so I don't really have any other comments than that. But the applicant, I understand, did bring plans tonight to share with the board. So as we would do with any other concept, just kind of listen to the presentation, offer feedback, and that way the applicant can decide how to proceed. Thank you, Robert. Welcome, Chris. Welcome again. Please introduce yeah. yourself again for the record. Chris. Hit the button on your microphone. I'm not sure it's on. Okay. How's that? Yeah. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I was a little disappointed. Um, I had a business idea, a business plan, um, and uh, I was excited about it because uh, it was something that is, um, is, is operating down south and on the west coast, and the market is untapped over here, and uh, it's something that I am going to move forward on, um, but um, I don't believe it's a good fit uh, in Merrimack. Um, so I have two options. One is I can build a hotel, and uh, an extended stay hotel, and I can set it up exactly the way that an extended stay hotel is set up today. Um, wipe out the garages, meals and rooms tax, furnish the rooms, front desk, just like you see, uh, typical extended stay so that there's no argument from the board as to whether or not it's a hotel or not. Um, the hotel brings traffic. Um, 
the hotel uh, brings people. And um, I've, you know, talked to my abutters, which I'm, you know, friendly with, and I, I want to maintain that friendliness. Um, and uh, I've just been weighing things out. And before I proceed with this hotel, um, I wanted to bring to you another idea uh, that they seem, my abutters seem to be in, in more favor of versus the hotel because it has little to no traffic. Uh, the parking requirements are literally, you know, four or five spaces. Um, it, uh, it, it wouldn't, it'd be shut down after hours. Uh, there wouldn't be any kids playing. There wouldn't be any pets running around. Uh, all the concerns that the hotel brought forth um, are pretty much wiped out with this idea. And um, I know this idea very well. Um, so I brought some 11 by 17s. I just wanted to, if I could just pass them out. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a conceptual that we've done with our engineer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I just, a quick question. Wasn't this presented to the board last year for no. a self storage at that location? No. no. It was a different kind of a thing. It was um, uh, kind of a warehouse for small businesses with some apartments over it, something like that? Industrial like that. condos, but uh, that got scrapped because of what's going on across the street. And there's going to be a big, giant warehouse development over there, and they're, I've talked to the developer, and, and uh, you know, they're, they're probably going to do more of what we were looking to do, so we don't, we don't want to do that. Um, this lays out nicely. Um, the fire truck can get around the building without any issue. Um, every one of my abutters has said if they had to choose between one or the other, they would, they would choose this. Um, there's really no issues that I could find. Um, I don't have to bring in this big, massive sewer line. The, the, the list is pretty much endless as far as, um, the differences between both projects. So, um, I want to get the I want to get the property developed. This is my last development in Merrimack, and then I'm moving on to uh, another town. And I think uh, if the board has any questions regarding this, I'd like to make a decision as to what we're going to develop there. Thank you for the presentation, Chris. Um, so let me just ask a couple questions about what's on the. Plan here. Yep. I see four stories tall. Is that about the same as what Synergy is? Or what's no, no, uh, because we built it in, in a hole. We actually have five floors there, but there would be four floors uh, from grade above. We can't go down because of the water table. Okay, so, so you're completely above grade here? Yeah, four stories total. Yeah. Okay. Um, the parking spaces um, that you have on the plan here, yep. is that where people would unload their wares, or is there a loading nope. dock somewhere? No, nope. if you look closer, um, from the from in front of those parking spaces, um, to the left and to the right, uh, on the each drive lane, you'll see a little line with an X. Um, that's the fencing that goes around the entire back of the property. Um, the customers would pull up that driveway, pull into those parking spaces, and enter into that little office there on the corner. Once they took care of their business, they would go around the corner, and you can see the arrows, the directional arrows. It's a one-way drive, more than plenty wide enough, and they bring the vehicles through the property and around the building. A um, little different compared to Synergy, so that they can come in one way and go out the other. I've learned with tractor trailers that, uh, I mean, we, we made it work over there without any issue, but it sure would have been nice to be able to do a complete circle around the building when it comes to tractor trailers. So um, we designed it so that we could do that here. Okay. So where do people go? Oh, I see it, loading lobby, right there. Yeah, right um, there. So everybody goes to the loading lobby, or are there any doors that go to the outside? 
Uh, no, uh, there's exterior uh, units all the way around the perimeter of the building. Uh, we would not be using those typical storage uh, roll-up doors that you see in the cheaper uh, facilities. We use a two-inch solid white garage door uh, with gaskets on the inside and the out. It just, it's much more presentable. If you've been to my facility in Merrimack, um, you've seen it. It's just it's just better. It's, okay. It's built right. So, but so, but there's there are some exterior doors, and then all the people from the inside go through the loading lobby. For yes, I for fire you. egress, there are doors um, around the perimeter of the building uh, because they're going to ask for that. Okay. Uh, but yes, everything is loaded from that loading lobby. There's uh, two elevators that'll be right inside those doors that take them up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you look through the? Um, the conditional use permit criteria that the staff outlined I don't I didn't read through them in any great detail but that's me neither so to do something like this here you have to go through this conditional use permit process which is just got a list of criteria that you have to meet that are in the staff's um, memo you don't necessarily have to dive in them today but I guess that the, the key to that is you know that's what we have to find that you've achieved in order to give it approval um, from my viewpoint, um, if this is what you prefer over the hotel um, and you meet the conditional use criteria, it seems like a fine use of the property to me. Um, if it makes the neighbors a little happier than having the hotel, um, that it doesn't usually wear on our uh, uh, decisions. Um, usually it matters whether you've met the criteria or not, but I'm always happier when an application or a proposal um, finds some harmony with the neighbors. Um, I, I'm sure that there'll be some discussion as you get to add a conceptual and into a site plan about where you put some landscaping and some trees and shrubs and things to, you know, make the site look nice. And I'm sure that there'll be a solution that you'll come up with that will make everybody happy. We always do. Yeah. Um, are there any waivers of any of our regulations that are needed for something like this? I know, Robert, you haven't had a chance to even look at it yet, so... Hard to tell, but are you aware of any waivers that you need from any of the I know rates? I'm going to be asking for a landscape waiver. Um, I mean, we're going, to, we're going to have landscaping, but, you know, to, to, to do what, what is required is, is really impossible. Um, so we would be asking for a, for a waiver on some of the landscaping. Um, other than that, I, I, I just I don't think we have anything that we're, uh, I mean, We've just, you know, with this concept, we've wiped out a lot of the, the negativity. So this is pretty much nice and clean. So, so you've got um, a relatively large unpaved area in the front where there's snow storage and a wetland stormwater treatment pond. And then you've got a buffer kind of around the perimeter of the property mm -hmm. with snow storage in there. It looks like that's, you know, five to ten feet wide most of the way. Is that sound about right, or is it closer than that? Or uh, you, you mean the driveway going around? No, the amount of green space that you have on the edge of pavement to the boundary uh, of the property. No, that's, uh, that's more like, um, you know, from the curb to the property line. You can see the parking space is 20 feet deep, so, you know, pretty close to 20 feet, and then 15 feet in some areas. Okay. Yeah. So you got a lot of room to do some landscaping there as substitutes yeah, yeah. instead of islands inside if you're in yeah. places that were the regulations would require islands. Yeah. Um, a good approach to figuring out waivers is to trade something for something. So yeah. when you can't do the, the island in the middle, but you'll do an extra tree or, or, or area of landscaping in a different spot, that's a pretty good approach to it. Do you have to have a dumpster on the site here? Will there be one? Yeah, the, the, it's right there in the corner, all fenced in. Um, you see that oh, little... See yeah, okay. Right across the way from the loading lobby, if anybody else is trying to find it. I see it. So you'll have an emergency generator for the whole facility, or just for the gates and? No, we functions? we uh, we put in a uh, a Kohler uh, emergency generator just in case. Um, we've got one at Synergy. It's proven to be a good piece to have. So. You guys all filled up over at Synergy. Uh we can't really just divulge that information. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, these. Oh, uh, but uh, uh, these things are certainly very, very popular these days. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're just, uh, we're just. Um, I kind of semi-retired, so we're all done running a business day to day, and now we're just going to be doing what we enjoy doing, and that's 
developing new one. Developing so you've actually sold the other placement? We did. I mean, I don't want to make you talk about things on the record that you didn't yeah. want to put on the record. But yeah, we did. Um, we did. I guess congratulations. Yeah, if that we, was it was a, we built a great reputation. Uh, we built a great business, and uh, this company liked it, and they wanted it, and they Good bought for you. it. So, yeah. Good for you. Okay, other members of the board have questions about the uh, conceptual? Well, I'll just say uh, I think this is a this meets all of the requirements of our zoning, as far as I can tell, and as far as any requirements that we would have beyond that, I don't see any infringement, and I, I think this is a, a good-looking plan that ought to fit in our, in, our, in, in our zoning and within our plan, so thank you for doing it over. Yeah. Barbara? Hi. Just a couple of questions for you. What a Butters did you discuss this with? Did you, uh, like, the Thoreaus who no, were nearby? Um, I discussed it with the bowling alley, mm -hmm. um, and I discussed it with um, these gentlemen right here. Uh, they each own the houses, one in the front and one right. in the back that abut my property. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> and... How many units are you planning for in here? Uh, we don't know. So um, we are going to be developing this and then selling it at CO because uh, we have a non-compete in place. Okay. And uh, we don't want to run a business anymore. Um, we just want to build it the way that we built Synergy because that's the right way to build it. And then we've got um, four to five different prospects that are interested in buying it. So you develop it and then sell it off. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and it would be to a, a, a it would be more than likely uh, to a business that's already operating in Merrimack or Bedford, and that's all I can really say. Okay. So, and they, in other words, they're full; they need more space, and they want to take that this as an a, as an annex. And it, there's a good possibility that the office wouldn't even be used because they can actually set the building up to run it remotely, remotely from their other location so yeah, because I was going to ask you about that because yeah. as you know we have five other st storage units you know self storage type yep. places yeah in Merrimack yeah one up the road right over the border in That's Bedford and you should know where all the competition is yeah. there yeah. do you really foresee that this building will in fact be used oh yeah okay Trust me. People have that much junk. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got okay. yeah, it. I've already started writing the book. Yes, the demand yeah. for these things is screaming hot yeah, yeah. everywhere. It's everywhere. just and, ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I think we may have more than five because there's yeah. a new one going in the south end of town. Um, You're right. It's You're under right. construction yep. down there. So and yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so my last question, Yeah. if I may. Yeah, please. Um, you mentioned tractor trailers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does the abutters know about those tractor trailers rolling when I by say their tractor house? tractor trailer, I mean a, a moving truck. Tra okay. You know, okay. They, they so people storing like their moved goods until maybe the house is like ready, Mayflower. et cetera. Yep. Okay. I mean, these, these yep. sometimes come into play. Typically, it's a U-Haul truck or a rider truck or a, a person's own vehicle. But once in a while, you do get a tractor trailer. And it's important that the tractor trailer can get around the building. Mm -hmm. So we design it so that the largest moving tractor trailer in the country can get around our building without issue. So, so when you have a site plan, when you're ready to come forward with a site plan, mm -hmm. have the engineers do the plan with the truck movements on it to yeah, yeah. show that there's enough room for, I guess, the 53-foot trailers? Yeah, we did it, uh, just so you know, and, and it's got plenty of room, but we will show it. It makes sense. It looks like even if you had to tweak the plan a little bit to make it, adjust it as you tried that, you still got room to do it. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised at all if you had plenty of room um, for something like that. Uh, anybody else have comments or questions? Okay. Um, Robert, as a conceptual, do we uh, conduct a public hearing for something like this or is it just planning board feedback? Just planning board feedback. Just the planning board feedback. Okay, so we don't need to take any public testimony. Um, is there any other specific questions you have of us, Chris? No, I just wanted to, you know, gauge your uh, your feedback on it because I've already spent 19 grand on the hotel, and uh, <laughs> I just, you know, can't believe we're just saying goodbye to that. So I'm hoping that uh, this approval goes smoothly. For this or for yes, the hotel? Yes, for this. We're going to talk about because it's the next thing on the yeah. agenda. Yeah. Um, not, I, not that that's your fault. I'm just saying I just, yeah. you know. 
Well, as the two things relate to each other, it's not really the planning board's role to choose a favorite among right. your two proposals. You're entitled to put forth whichever you propose, and um, we apply the regulations to it. Um, and I know that that caused a lot of discussion last time about what is a hotel and what isn't a hotel. Mm -hmm. Um, ultimately, the planning board isn't the entity that makes a call about what it is. That's the planning and zoning administrator. Um, our dialogue with you last time about what is or isn't a hotel was intended to inform that decision a little bit, but um, ultimately you can put forward whatever you like, you, as innovative a business model as you, as you choose to. Um, the, the trouble is that, that we've got to apply our regulations to mm -hmm. it and that may end up with a square peg in a round hole that mm. because it, because your innovation doesn't fit mm. something that the regulations accommodate. But um, So anyway, I, I just wanted to stop for a second just to say, um, although I like this proposal and I think it'd be fine in the neighborhood, I, I don't necessarily want to get into the area of saying I like this better or I like the other thing yeah. worse kind of thing because that's not, shouldn't be a planning board role to right. make that choice for you. Um, but it, it, everything that I'm seeing on this piece of paper, if you brought this forward, I see no reason why this wouldn't meet our regulations. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that our peer review people would find some, you know, catch basin that belongs three feet to the left or something, but that's their job. Um, but I don't see any major roadblocks to getting something like this approved. Okay. Um, right. Robert, do we need to do any other business with this one or is that it? All right. All right. So let's uh, close that agenda item. And Chris Ross, you're up again for the next one. Thank you for the plan. Yeah. Robert, did you get a copy for the file? I do have one. Okay. Uh, item four on agenda is Chris Ross is the applicant and 702 Daniel Webster Highway LLC is the owner. Continued review for acceptance and consideration of final approval for a site plan to construct a 42 suite extended stay hotel and associated site improvements. The parcel is located at 702 DW Highway in the C2 General Commercial District, tax map 7E, lot 23-1, case planning board 2021-40, and it's continued from our December 7th planning board meeting. So uh, no. introduce yourself again. Yeah, our Chris uh, Ross, 702 DW Highway, Merrimack. Um, you know, in all honesty, I think we'll uh, just... I think we I think we're just going to scrap this and uh, move forward on the storage building. Okay, so you want to pull this uh, one off the agenda? Yeah, I mean, I, I just I haven't heard from you guys, but I just want to I, I just wanted to gauge what, whether or not I was going to be getting kickback like I did in the other meeting, and so far, just the, the comments I've gotten so far is favorable. So I could go either way. I don't really care. Uh, someone's going to buy it, whatever I build. So. Um, I just think that I want to. I want to. I want to. I, I don't want an uphill battle. I just want to, you know, get my project approved and, and get it built. So okay. I think this is pretty clean. I think we all agree on that, right? So, do you want to? Um, you certainly can withdraw number four off of the agenda if you want to, or withdraw the whole project. Yeah. You can also, you know, decide within a week or something like okay. that and just let the staff know so that sure. you're not on the spot here. Right. If you go home and say, damn, I wish I'd have thought that through a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. You all know. right, we'll do that. I like your idea. Um, so let the staff know within a week if yep. you're withdrawing number four and and then put forth number three whenever you want to because right. it's conceptual. Right. And when you do the full site plan, you'll have to re-notice the butters and all that stuff anyway. Sure. Make sense? Sure. Um, Robert, do we need to do anything specific with number four to uh, give him that opportunity? So, yeah, if you're going to do it that way, you would need to continue it to a date certain. So that way, if he decides in the interim to withdraw, he could send me an email to withdraw, and that way it would be dealt with that way. Okay. So let's continue it to our first February meeting, which is February 1st. How about that? Yeah. Um, and then if you withdraw it, you withdraw it. If you don't withdraw it, you're on the calendar for February 1st right. for the hotel. Right, because I'll have my site plan completed by then. Yeah. Where? Well, the, the um, self-storage needs to, uh, uh, an application with its own a butter notice and all that stuff yep. it's starting for, from zero. Right. The February 1st would be to go ahead with the hotel if you decided to do that. And if you decide you don't want to, just let the staff know and it'll... Right, but I'll still be able to make this on the February 1st meeting, correct? Mm -hmm. 
I don't know what the deadline is for that, but I think you. I think that might be next week. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I'll have it ready. All right, guys. Okay. Cool. All so set? let's vote. Uh, is there a motion to continue to um, February first? I'll make a motion that we continue uh, both the application and the acceptance and public hearing to February first. Second. Second. Uh, Makes sense. Count Barber is a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right. All right. So that's five zero zero. We'll see you February first, one way or the other. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a coffee okay. Item five on our agenda is the John Flatley Company as the applicant and owner. Continue review for acceptance and consideration of final approval for a lot line adjustment to increase the area of Map Six E, Lot Three Seven and a site plan to construct two 48-unit apartment buildings in addition to the existing 240 units, both in accordance with the most recently amended flatly mixed-use conditional use permit. The parcels are located at 5 Gilbert Crossing and 645 Daniel Webster Highway in the I-1 Industrial Aquifer Conservation and Elderly Housing Overlay Districts and Wellhead Protection Area. Tax Map 6E, Lots 31, which is 645 DW Highway and 3-7, which is 5 Gilbert Crossing. Case Planning Board 2021-44, and it's continued from our December 7th Planning Board meeting. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Um, so in this particular case, the as the board may recall from prior meetings, the applicant uh, was asked by staff because their plan had a lot line adjustment and site plan combined into one application package we had asked them to pull those apart and separate those to make for ease of review and understanding procedurally how to get through the application. They have gone ahead and done that. So in our office at the last submittal deadline for the January 18th meeting, we did receive separate applications, separate plan sets. So it's a much cleaner way to proceed now. That action has rendered this notice obsolete. So my recommendation the applicant requested a continuance of this to the 18th, but them supplying new applications and plans renders this hearing itself moot. So my recommendation would be that the board uh, table this item indefinitely so they can withdraw it, this, this motion, the, the, this notice per se, to make it formally go away so we can proceed uh, at the next meeting anyway with the new applications and plans. All right, thank you for that, Robert. Um, Nelson, you don't realize how close you came to chairing an item on the planning board here because I was refused <laughs> myself on that one. Um, okay. I didn't. <laughs> I truly didn't. What's, what's the will of the board with respect to uh, tabling this indefinitely so that the applicant has a chance to withdraw it? I would so move, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Nelson. Second? Second. Second by Barbara. Um, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Count myself as abstaining. 401 uh, for uh, tabling it indefinitely. Uh, and the reason for the abstention, to, to the extent anybody has any concern over it, is because my law firm does work with the Flatley Company. So I uh, have uh, continuously abstained from mm -hmm. consideration of those matters. Item six on our Mr. agenda. Jim, before before yes. we go on, I'd like to just put something on the record with regard to this uh, plan when it comes back to us. And uh, because I have mentioned it before, and I don't know if it's gotten across to everyone, but I, I am not happy with the traffic study that we've been using as a basis for approval of the two additional um, residential units and uh, I wanted an update I would like to see an update of that traffic study and in fairness to the applicant and everyone else I, I wanted to say that at this time so they're not surprised uh, when they come back Robert is that information you can put forward to the applicant so yes sir. Aware of it? thank you okay okay um, with the applicant not here, I don't want to get into deep discussions no. on any of the details or things. Barbara, do you have a? Yeah, actually, I had the same concern. And this is something that's not new. We've talked about this with several other of the buildings that have come across to us as part of that complex, if you will. And in fact, I wanted to uh, request that the, com the uh, community development 
office have Fidelity do, I mean, sorry, flatly do a full traffic study as per 3-1.4.A.2 of the site plan regulations to include the two new apartment buildings being proposed as well as the remainder of the complex, whether the buildings have been built or they have been planned or if they are still in concept development and have not come to the planning board as yet. I don't, I, I'm recused on it, so I wouldn't comment on it at all. Robert, is that information that you could provide to the applicant? I, I can. I don't know how that works exactly, but I, I can certainly relay that the board definitely wants a more detailed traffic study than what they received mm -hmm. with the initial submittal. Exactly, the full exactly. traffic study, exactly. yeah. you know, to include all of that as per the, the regulation um, so that we actually see the complete traffic with all of the tractor trailers for all of the warehouses, for all of the apartment buildings, for any other development that they're doing that's commercial or otherwise. Thanks, Robert. Other, I want to probably Thank you. beyond the level of comments that we would normally do without having an agenda item uh, before and the applicant here to do it. So yeah. without objection, let's move on on our agenda to item six, which is Kerner's Car Care as the applicant and D. Kern 2 LLC as the owner. Continued review for acceptance and consideration of final approval for a site plan for a change of use from a limited automotive service oil change and car wash facility to a full automobile service and repair facility in addition to the existing car wash use. The parcel is located at 386 DW Highway in the C2 General Commercial Elderly Housing Overlay and Aquifer Conservation Districts. Tax Map 4D3, Lot 28, Case Planning Board 2021-45. The items continued from the December 21, December 21st, 2021 Planning Board meeting. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Uh, just to recap some history on this, uh, this site was originally approved as a car wash and limited cell, um, cell storage, limited service facility, limited to oil changes back some time ago. Um, apparently, over time, that limited oil change service kind of expanded into a full auto service type of facility. That never ended up getting a planning board approval. So here we are today. The applicant is trying to get that retroactively corrected and approved. Uh, they went to the ZBA to get a special exception for the full auto service and repair use. That was granted in June. And now they're here with the formal site plan before the board. Thank you, Robert. Is the applicant here? Jeff Cavan with TF Moran's office. Uh, Dave Kerner, um, owner of D Kern 2 LLC. So we had, um, he, he was brought to his attention. He went into the VBA, was granted uh, the expanded use for a full car uh, care at the facility. So what was out there was an express lube two bays of express lube and four bays of car wash. What was out there has been, the uh, facility's been there for 30 plus years. Um, what we're here to ask for is, again, keeping the two lube bays and having four, uh, changing the car wash bays to auto repair bays. Um, <clears throat> so the use is now granted by, or yeah, permitted by the variance. Um, we have gone through and created a site plan showing what we would do to the property and that basically is no physical changes to the pavement or anything like that. It is going in and restriping to create parking spaces. Um, this was set up more as a lineup bay to go into the car wash 
So instead of having that, we have a dry valve, parking spaces around the perimeter. We satisfy the parking requirements, uh, one-way circulation around the building. This is where the former uh, Pizza Hut was, uh, just to orient you. Um, the drainage system that's out here currently, this half of the site basically drains into three catch basins that are connected with perforated pipe they're leaching so <clears throat> that handles basically everything on this side of the building and this portion of the back and infiltrates the majority of the storms there the balance of it sheets off runs down here into this large grass area in the front of the site before going into the dw highway um, again it's a relatively small site so the flows aren't real high to begin with so for the most part you get uh, leaching or infiltration again no proposed changes just leave the system as is no changing to impervious coverage uh, so in addition to the striping we're proposing to add right now there's a there's a fence that runs these two sides of the property uh, so we're proposing to add some additional landscaping down this property line there's some fairly substantial trees here but we're adding some arborvitae and a few other trees here and some shrubs in between just to screen and clean that side up um, lighting is existing uh, there's one one pole here and then there are I think uh, six or seven building mounted type lights uh, we did have those modeled provided a photometric plan of what it generates today but again we're not proposing to, to do any physical changes um, when he was first notified he did go out and plug and fill the floor drains in the facility so those aren't allowed within Merrimack so those have been addressed already so um, again it's a relatively straightforward change of use based on the ITE manual you know going from a car wash to auto repair actually shows a slight reduction of traffic but I call it this basically a wash similar tra traffic flow pattern so <clears throat> we see it as everything's going to stay pretty much the same just a relatively minor change of use so I'll turn it back to the board and try to answer any questions you might have Thank you, Jeff. Um, Robert, has this been peer reviewed? This has been peer reviewed, yes. Were there any comments from us? And they, there were some comments. They're relatively minor in nature, um, mostly standard notes and, and, and things of the like that just should be added. Just yeah. minor comments relating to some notes and whatnot to be added. Uh, they, they, even though there were no changes to the to the impervious surface, they did provide a stormwater report, so it, it came back pretty good. Uh, so this, there's really not much concern that we have, or Farson O'Neill had for that matter, on this site. Okay, so they looked at the lighting and the in the drainage. They did. Okay, that's all I needed to know. So they peer reviewed it. Um, <coughs> The question for the applicant that I have is, um, have you incorporated a sidewalk into your plan or do you expect to ask for a waiver of the sidewalk requirement? Um, we weren't proposing a sidewalk, so we would request a waiver. Right now there is no sidewalk in the general area along uh, the road, so um, it would basically be a sidewalk in the middle of nowhere connecting to nothing. So we would yep. request a waiver of that. I know that the town council is um, proposing to uh, do a lot of sidewalk construction in this area to connect some of the sidewalks that have been constructed. And so it may not be a sidewalk to nowhere um, when you account for, um, I don't know how many, uh, w where there are sidewalks in the vicinity, but I know both north and south of here on that side of the road, there's parcels with sidewalks. Nelson, do you have any more specific knowledge about where there are sidewalks? Um, well, I don't think the sidewalks come to either of the two abutting properties, north or south, on, on, this, correct. on this particular site. Um, it would be, let's see, normally I would, uh, would certainly want to add a sidewalk on this. However, um, 
And this is a pretty minor change uh, of, uh, of the site plan. And uh, I'm willing to listen to the board on that if you want to give him a relief of that. But um, we have not given relief to others in the area. Barbara, can you shed any insight into what the town council might be considering on sidewalks and capital improvement plan type stuff, or is that a little too far off in the weeds? It, well, some of it is far off in the weeds. What uh, they are, th they have applied for grants that would, the, the, the idea is to go from the Merrimack 360 north to uh, Bedford Road. Uh, so this would definitely be within that you know, work zone, if you will. And, and the idea is to join all of those sidewalks along the way. Bob, do you have more information? Yeah, and just to refresh the board's memory for two recent plans, the New World Gas, which is, I think, two properties to the north of here, has a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. And Neat Auto Sales, which is the next property north of that, was also required to have a sidewalk just a month ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, Thanks, it's Bob. the property just to the north? Yeah, then there's I take that yeah about two I properties to the north of this one. Where we're both both of those properties were required to have sidewalk. Yeah, so this would connect to one of those. It wouldn't connect to them, but it would be two two properties away. But again, uh, and again, even a couple of lots further north than that, you have the the base of East Chamberlain Road, where that office building that oh, yeah. was approved also has a sidewalk with it. So mm -hmm. they are slowly filling in here. Yeah, in the town proposal, uh, the uh, grant that they've tentatively receiving is is 10 years off mm -hmm. at least. so yeah they do yeah. take a while to get there so yeah. to the south we have the car dealership that we can see on the satellite picture and then it's columbia circle and then the um little strip mall with billy's pizza in it mm -hmm. and yeah. then we're at merrimack 360 so we're not very far from yeah. merrimack 360 <laughs> um which has a requirement to do its sidewalks uh, or something. I don't remember exactly what was required of it. They, their sidewalks come out to the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it comes right to Route right. 3. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, so from the applicant, from the, the applicant, um, if um, you wanted to request a waiver of uh, the sidewalks, um, I would certainly be amenable to giving you the opportunity to submit that in writing and with a more developed argument about the sidewalks. If you wanted us to vote on it now just based on the oral request, we can certainly do that too. It's up to you. Um, I'm not persuaded as I sit here based on the oral representation of the waiver argument that I would grant it I, or that I would vote in favor of a waiver. Um, given that there's an intention to have more sidewalks in the area, some under construction, similar properties, a couple up and down the street that are not far from you where we didn't waive those requirements. Yeah, I, I guess so. The, the question came up a couple days ago is when I was first made aware of the, the request, should we or should we not put it in. Initially, we didn't do it, obviously, because it was a minor change of use and that we weren't proposing you know, any physical changes at all on the property other than some paint and general landscaping. So that's why we didn't initially propose it. And then, you know, looking at it, we didn't see, didn't have I guess other we didn't know the that. big picture plan of, of yeah. sidewalk. Uh, you yeah. know, um, I don't know, do you have specifications of what sidewalk you're, is it a bituminous sidewalk? Yeah. Um, yeah, they can but be concrete or asphalt, um, and, and there are some engineering specs that the um, department can put you in touch with. Um, I think it's five feet wide, and it has to meet ADA requirements at its terminals. Um, so there's no um, curb or anything that you have to uh, you, you cross set over. it back off the edge of pavement so drainage stays as yeah. is yeah. and so forth. Yeah, it's actually preferred to be set off of the roadway a little bit uh, to the extent there's room to do it because it's right. more comfortable for the pedestrians to be Yeah, and you don't have to do all the drainage. Yeah, we don't want to get you into a closed drainage curb system. That would be a disaster. Um, do, do you want to weigh in? Yeah, I guess um, who's going to maintain the sidewalk? Um, once the sidewalks are developed, the town maintains. I mean, is it something that, because both my abutters do not have sidewalks, is this something that can, because it's going to just, nobody would use that at this present time. 
does it make sense that when the other abutters do the sidewalks that I'm required to do the sidewalks as well? Because, yep. I mean, who's going to use the sidewalk now when there's no other? Um, well, there's two parts to the answer. Um, the, the second part about waiting for abutters or trying to connect those pieces, there's limits to what we're able to regulate, and we've had situations in the past where we've asked an applicant to submit the cost of it and then hold it and you know, put it together with the rest of the money when it comes together. Um, and all of those things have pr proved for different reasons to be an unsatisfactory result that didn't end okay. up with actual sidewalks. Um, so that's there, there's some headwinds in that direction um, in terms of people using it um, I promise you people are already walking across the front of your property because they walk up and down DW Highway every day um, they're just doing it on the edge of the road and for you know 100 or 200 feet or however wide your property is they'll use your sidewalk uh, before they have to return to um, whatever they find for the abutting parcels until the sidewalks are constructed on those abutting parcels and again um, who maintains them t town does town town, does. town plow sidewalks mm -hmm. yeah they've had a sidewalk plow got it almost a decade now got i think they now. replaced them got, got yeah. two now she says so <laughs> if we agreed to add that to the plan as a condition and i don't know if we would again so would it be acceptable if he didn't want to build it now to bond and build it in a little later or you require it to be built required to be built now okay um yeah that bonding it is the the situation that i talked about in the past which seems to always find some way to fall off the tracks and um no, no particular right. consistent so reason why it does it just always does always does it's like uh, slot car racing when you're a kid cars are always coming off the track um your, your car stand. Um, any other comments or questions by anybody? I know that there's. Uh, I have one other question. questions about. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I have just one question. What's the timeline in order if I get approved for me to get it finished? So I mean, obviously uh, it's the winter. A lot of flexibility with that. So okay. our normal approval um, has conditions of approval. One of them would be the sidewalk, and you get six months to finish okay. that. But that's that's just to get the plan signed, and then you can have you know additional time after that to actually get it okay. built. Um, right. And then there's some extensions available, and Robert can probably give you a better sense of exactly how that plays out because usually it's tied to a certain certificate of occupancy which isn't on the table right in this case it would be a unit completion um, and if they were to bond to get through the winter they would have to get the waiver from you guys uh, since that's not that's only landscaping can be bonded uh, without planning board approval um, but I also want to remind the board as a side note that we should probably vote for uh, application acceptance before we keep going uh, thank you Robert for that reminder um, we haven't accepted the application for review. What's the will of the board with respect to accepting the application for review? I will so Nelson. move, Mr. Chairman, to Is accept there, the plan for review. Is there a second? Second. Let Brian be the second. Welcome. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Aye. Thank you for that reminder, Robert. Um, okay, so we've had a lot of discussion with the applicant, and I think we're going to have some more discussion about that and some other things. Um, what Robert was just suggesting uh, touched on the idea of bonding, but not bonding for um, allowing it to be built years down the road, but just to get past the winter, right. you know, can't construct season. Right. So we would agree to, to add, add a five foot by two minute sidewalk. Okay. As, as a condition. Yeah. And um, one of the things that was on my mind, I haven't been out on the site in a while. Um, I used to get my oil changed early years ago. I don't know why I stopped. Um, I, I, I've heard some feedback that there's a, a lot of cars parked on the site and parked around the rear of the building and between the building and the road and not necessarily in designated parking spaces. Can you shed any light on any of that? Is that sort of your experience? or? Well, I'm the landlord. He's the tenant. So I'm going to let him speak all on those, All those cars are custom. Um, Got to grab, get to a microphone and introduce yourself Your first. Name, so yeah. My first name is Eric. I'm the business owner of Eric's Custom Exhaust. Hi, Eric. So all those cars that are currently there are the ones that are being worked on repeatedly. And when they're done, they get parked on the side for people waiting in the office. They come out and pick up their vehicles and stuff like that. And if they're not being worked on, they get parked... Um, as we have on a plan on in the designated parking spots. 
So um, except when parked in the back and stuff like that, that's more than likely employee parking. I mean, employee cars that we take home every day. Okay. But they're not left there just in case there's a fire yeah. or anything like that at, at, during the nighttime. So let me make sure I understand what you're saying. Except for a customer immediately picking up a car that's finished working and they're ready to drive it away, everything is in a designated parking space one way or another. Yeah. Whether it's in front of the bays or in parking spaces. Okay. Um, and if there's anything left over, it's um, being waited, waiting to pick up, be picked up and they're either inside or in designated parking spots. And obviously our self-employed vehicles we take home every day. Which is okay. Uh, yeah, your employees' vehicles or anybody else's, whether your customers, your employees, or whatever, you can have as many as you want. Just put them in a parking space. Yeah. Um, and if they're not in a parking space, um, why don't we designate on this plan one or two spots for the customer pickup cars that you're talking about, so that we've got a limit on those, so that we don't end up with, you know. Well, they're usually waiting in the office, so when we drive around the building, we we'll leave the car running. That yeah. way it's nice and warm, and they can just. After they're done paying, they go out and re retrieve their vehicle and go on with their day. Um, so, sounds like a perfect plan and, and suitable customer service. I think that the, I've heard from folks that have observed that there's cars parked there on a more extended basis uh, along the road between your building and the road and along behind the, behind the building. Is that not the case? No. Okay. Um, as a part of the uh, approval of this, the requirement going forward is that all the cars are in parking spaces. And if that isn't the case, if that doesn't turn out to be the way that this is used, um, then you would end up you know, with the department trying to figure out how to enforce the regulations and right. address your site approval. And you don't want that. Right. Um, are any of the cars for sale no. on the site? Are any of the cars um, uh, waiting for repairs for more than a day or two? Or? Yes. Why are they there for more than a couple uh, of days? We have a, nationwide, they're having problems with, with uh, getting parts for vehicles now. So we may have to wait two or three days, maybe a week. How many vehicles do you have that are on site waiting for parts? Uh, probably like uh, seven or eight right now. What would you do if you have more vehicles waiting for parts than you have spaces? I would, ha I would One, schedule two, them out. Four, five, six, seven. I see eight spaces along the back of the property. Are there other spaces, parking spaces? On the side of the property. On the side <coughs> where, the, seven where the line used to be. So for the car oh, line. I see. Like some stacking spaces. No. The, oh, wait. I'm sorry. I was looking at one the of the existing conditions plans. The property. Yeah, it looks like yeah. One, two, three, four. Seven on the Eleven back. and seven. So 18 total spaces. And then we show one in front of each bay. Okay. So that they could you okay. know, have, yeah. have a, yeah. a car being worked on and a car outside and it's out of the dry bow and so forth. Okay, I understand. Do you have, um, you share a driveway with uh, Mr. G's Pizza next door. Do you have any e cross easements for parking or do they share parking with you or anything other than the driveway? No. no. Okay. Do you have any of your customers park over at Mr. G's? If they do, I, I address the uh, matter immediately. We have a sign. Well. And what we, do you? Yeah, we do have a sign. So, I, you know, if they don't see the sign or don't read the sign and they still park in Mr. G's parking lot, I run out and tell them to park on my side of the property. That way I don't have any issues with Mr. G's. Okay. Bob, just to point out, um, on the existing conditions plan, it looks like the entrance to the site with Mr. G's, there is a cross-access easement there. It's a small one. That does kind of cover the the crossover between the two sites. Okay, so just to be able to do the exit through the right side and the entrance to the left side. Yep. And, and kind of cross sign the as you enter um, into the parking lots. This is Eric's custom exhaust to the to the right. Okay. Do any other planning board members have comments or questions, <laughs> Barbara? Just one question. Um, I see where you have the oil separation and storage tank for the oil, and that would have been left over from when you were just doing oil changes. Uh, what do you do with the volatile organic chemicals you get now? Because now you've got radiator drainage, antifreeze. We have, we have storage containers 
for those uh, liquids and then they get picked up once they're full. Okay, great, thank you. Companies, yeah. Where are the storage containers for the? In the basement. In the basement. Yeah. Other comments or questions? I wasn't looking this way when I asked before. So, public here. so you'll be doing away with uh, all the car wash bays. Yes. Yeah. And you'll be closing off that side and so they won't be those bays won't be able to drive through anymore? They will be able to drive through. You'll still so be able to drive yes. through. Yeah, so we have it set up for basically one way traffic flow, but they will pull in, pull out the other side. Okay. Okay. More Neil, you all set? Uh no, that's no, I was just curious. Okay. Nelson? I'm all set, that? thank you. Okay, let's do the public hearing. Are there any abutters or citizens who wish to weigh in and provide the planning board with any information about this application? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Um, so we don't have to deal with a waiver because we're doing the sidewalk and there are no other waiver requests. Meets all of our standards. Cars will be all parked in spaces going forward if they aren't already. Maybe they are already. Um, what's the will of the board? That's Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the plan uh, as submitted with the addition of a sidewalk and um, and the other conditions. If there are other conditions in Mr. Uh, Price's memo, I just don't recall if that's the case. It's yeah. Casey Wolf's Casey. memo this time. Oh, Casey and Wolf's. there are some conditions, plus we're yeah. adding that we're going to allow them to bond over the winter months for the yeah. sidewalk. Okay. Does that sound right? That would, I would include that, yes. Is there a second for Nelson's motion? Second. Second by Councillor Healy. Further discussion? Robert, do you clear on what we're moving and voting? Yep. Conditional approval, and you're also, well, technically you'd be granting a waiver to that section, so it would have to be done with those justifications, though, um, in order to allow him to establish an escrow for a sidewalk. Okay. So in order I'll to... i the section for you. That includes a waiver, which would be strict conformity would pose an unnecessary hardship to the applicant, and the waiver would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulations. Does that sound right? That sounds right. Given okay. the weather conditions. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Does that give you everything you need, Robert, for the record? I'm just trying to add the section in there because I want to have it referenced, or I can add that section afterwards. I don't remember. I don't have it right now. Okay. As long as you can add it, as long as you've got what you need for the record. 6.01.C. Okay. Motion and a second to grant conditional final approval subject to the conditions in the staff memo plus the addition of a sidewalk with a waiver of the requirement to construct it immediately and able to bond it. Um, Robert, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah uh, with a condition that it be done no later than uh, six months from today's date would be good because that that we're well into summer at that point. There's no reason it can't be done by that point. Sounds right? Yes, yes okay. that sounds right. Barbara, you seconded the motion. That sounds right to you, too? Yes, sir. Okay. Then all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero. You're all set. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, let's see. That's this pile. Come on back over here. Let's see. Anthony Hunter as the applicant and owner. Review for a conditional use permit for a level two home occupation proposing gunsmithing and customization of firearms. The parcels located at 15 Mountain View Drive in the R1 residential by map district, tax map 6A, lot 613, case planning board 2022, number one. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? This is a level two home occupation for a firearms use under the zoning ordinance. Firearms uses are required to be a, a planning board decision, not a staff decision. Outside of that, I would turn it over to the applicant and the board to make a presentation and, and so you guys can ask your questions. Excellent, come on forward. Once you're settled in, introduce yourself and tell us about your proposed business. Anthony Hunter, 15 Mountain View Drive, Merrimack. So it says uh, gunsmith and customization. Really what it is is pistol building. Um, I enjoy building 1911 custom pistols. Um, I've been doing it on my own uh, firearm collection for a while. Um, I've lived in the residence for a little over seven years. Um, 
there's been no impact to the neighborhood. The only addition that this would bring um, change from the previous seven years is maybe a few FedEx deliveries to the house. Uh, but I think those mixed in with the Amazon deliveries that already come to the house, I don't think the neighborhood will notice an impact. Very good. Um, does your business require you to obtain a federal firearms license? It would, yes. Can you identify some of the requirements that are necessary in order to achieve a federal firearms license? So one of them is you have to have uh, local ordinance approval in order to operate out of the premises. Um, that would be the first one. Um, I, I, I can't remember. I have the permit filled out at home waiting on for the approval from this um, committee before I can move forward. But that's the last thing that I can, or that's the one thing that I can remember. Um, Pop okay. quiz. Sorry about that. I, I just um, trying to share information for uh, the purposes of a public hearing so that everybody understands some of that background information. Um, my understanding from past applications similar to this one is that the police department um, is required to weigh in and provide some report yeah. to the so ATF. The, yes, the application is required to be delivered to the chief law enforcement officer of the area, so the police chief would receive a copy of the application as well. Okay. Uh, do you have a gun safe? I do. Do you intend to use it for all of the firearms that you've involved in your business? I do. Do you have one for personal use as well? I do. Is it the same one? I have multiple. Multiple? Yes. Okay. All the firearms are in a safe one way or another? That is correct. Okay. Do you have an alarm on your home? Yes. I have multiple layers of security that includes alarm. I don't want to go specifically too much into the security in a public setting, but I do have multiple layers of security, yes. Okay. Which includes a house alarm. Good choice on not providing the details of the emergency <laughs> measures. Um, will customers come to your property? No customers will come to the property. How will you deal with your customers? It'll be uh, via um, FedEx or UPS. Okay. So they FedEx you something or you FedEx them a completed product? You order parts and things? E exactly. And I, build it. Either they buy what would, I guess, the closest analogy, they go out and buy a Chevrolet and, and ship it to me and they expect a Cadillac in return. That would be the closest analogy. How does that work with shipping by FedEx and UPS and what requirements do they have it, for? It has to go from one fire, uh, federal firearms licensee to another. So it can't go to a private resident. It has to go to another licensee. And then the, the customer goes and picks it up from that license holder. Okay. So does UPS have to actually come face to face with you? You can't just like leave packages to be exactly. picked up and all yeah, that? Yeah, you can't leave it on the doorstep and, and just expect a pickup. It has to be handed over to uh, a shipper and then handed to the license holder at the other end. Okay. I had to do that once. They had license, driver's licenses and, and social security, not social security, but um, serial numbers from the firearm and everything else Absolutely. recorded. And, and depending the state, you know. Every state has their own requirements. You, you may end up doing a state background check on the other end just to pick it up. Yep. Yeah. Well, my brother's stepson stole it on the other end anyway, so it didn't help. Um, so uh, no customers are coming to your house. There's no, no signage outside no of signage. your property? No. How will you advertise to your customers? Um, via the Internet. So they'll... Um, uh, come find some website that doesn't necessarily identify... Well, it would have to identify your address, right? Um, they'd have to be able yes. to do business with you. Yes, and besides when you're a federal firearm licensee, your address is out there anyways. So That's true. I had to look those up before. Yep. Um, actually, when I looked them up for a similar application than this, one of the things that I found out is something like two-thirds of the federal firearms licenses in the country are in residential mm -hmm. um, offices, ho home occupations. Yes. Uh, they're everywhere. Um, no employees? No employees, myself. Um, That's it. Oils and chemicals and that sort of thing, gun oil? Um, yeah, gun oil, very, very minimal, you know, anything that could be picked up with a rag. So um, no major storage of chemicals. Any need for a, a chemical cabinet or something like that to store the cleaning supplies, or is it even more minimal than that? It, it's more minimal than that, it, a gun cleaning kit. Okay. Um, how about ammunition? I think Nelson had mentioned that. Do you, so the, the personal use is up to you, and I don't even have a question to ask about that. Yeah. Obviously, only for 
customer use or commercial use. Yeah, the, the only ammunition would be, you know, if you modified the firing mechanism, you would want to go test fire that. So that weapon would be taken to a commercial range, test fired at a commercial ra range, and then returned home. Um, so there would be a minimal amount of, of ammunition um, to be able to do that to make sure that the weapon fires and, and is safe for the customer. Yep. Okay. Um, so if your customers don't come to your business, you may not never see them face to face at all. They would just order something from you the way I would order it online, I guess. Yes, I don't. I have no intentions of having customers at my residence. Okay. Uh, you mentioned pistols, um, 1911. Yes. Yes. Um, just one. I, I'm not that familiar with guns to really understand the ins and outs of what that means. That, that's a particular model of a pistol. Um, uh, originally, World War One, um, and it's it's very popular in world. It was the Army's weapon through World War One, World War Two. Um, no longer the Army's weapon, but there's still a lot of avid shooters out there that that favor that model of a pistol. So, so they have to get built by a gunsmith. Um, as I said, you can go buy one off the shelf. You're basically buying a Chevrolet. A lot of folks want them tuned and customized. I see. So they send them to somebody. Or you can go buy the parts um, and build one custom. But none of the parts just fit together. They have to be hand fit. Is there any reason why you're kind of focused just on one model? If I brought you something else, you wouldn't work on it for me? Or? I would not, uh, whether I was approved to or not. But that's just not my interest. Okay. Um, I, it doesn't matter to me what choices you make for how you run your business and what models you choose, but um, I don't, just don't want to unnecessarily tie you into certain representations that um, tend to bind a year from now for no particular reason, you yeah. know, if there's a... Which is why I listed on the application gunsmithing and customization. Okay. Um, I, I made it general on purpose, but my passion is 1911s. My friends are helping me understand what a 1911 okay. pistol is. Thank you. <laughs> yes, need that too. <laughs> there we go. All right. So uh, I don't have any other questions related to the uh, home business. Uh, do other members of the board have any questions? No. Yeah. I'm all set. Are there any uh, butters or interested citizens who wish to weigh in as the board considers this application? Well, if I may, yes, uh, who submitted the um, the paper that uh, lettered V to describe the nature of your business and outline? Did I did. Okay, you came up with okay. Well, so the application they they list very zoning ordinance criteria and they list very specific questions and so those answers relate to those questions that they ask so for instance it says you know no more than 500 square feet of existing gross living area and so you know i listed on there it's actually 260 feet of, of living area so i went b one by one and answered each one of those criteria do you recall what number eight was that was not applicable um number eight is if the home Occupation is a daycare facility, off-street parking, and appropriate off-street area for drop-off pickup. Yep. It's not a daycare, so it's right. not applicable. Far from it. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Thank you for Thank the you. answer. <laughs> Other discussion by the board? Okay. Um, members of the public or citizens who wish to weigh in? Going once. Come on forward. Come on forward and have a seat, and uh, once you're settled in, Make sure the microphone's turned on so people can hear you. And then introduce yourself and tell me what's on your mind. My name is Menu Lowy. I've been a resident of Merrimack for the last 24 years. Can you touch the microphone button just to make sure it's on? I don't think it is. Bring it a little closer to you and say your name again. My name is Menachem Lowy, and I've been a resident of Merrimack for the last 24 years. Um, I am a neighbor of the applicant, and just to dispel any misconception or whatever, he f he's a first-class gentleman. There was never any, uh, I would say, problems, whatever, between us, from whatever reason. And I have all the confidence that nothing is going to be harmed by this, uh, by for him f to receive his license. So you support him? Absolutely, I support it 200%. Terrific, mm -hmm. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for that feedback. 
Are there any other abutters or citizens who wish to weigh in? If they're not, then we'll close the public hearing. And what's the will of the board? Nelson? I would be willing, Mr. Chairman, I would make a motion to approve the application uh, with the conditions as specified in the uh, staff memo dated uh, December 29th. And, um, and that's it. Is there a second for Nelson's motion? Second. Second by Councillor Healy. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero. You are all set. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Number eight on our agenda is Merrimack Premium Outlets LLC is the applicant and owner. Review for acceptance and consideration of an amendment to a previously approved site plan to allow a variety of temporary event uses and other permanent customer amenities within the existing parking areas in accordance with the recently amended Merrimack Premium Outlets conditional use permit. The parcel is located at 80 Premium Outlets Boulevard in the I-2 Industrial and Aquifer Conservation Districts and Wellhead Protection Area, tax map 3C, lot 191-1, Case Planning Board 2022-2. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? Uh, just by way of reminder, uh, this application, as the board may remember, uh, um, this was the amended CUP that we saw sometime over the past couple of months for some customer amenities, amenities at the Merrimack Premium Outlet site, as well as the ability to hold some large-scale events on the property. Uh, that conditional use permit was approved conditionally, uh, and they've addressed those, and now this is the site plan for those to, to formalize those uh, requested uses. Okay. Now my agenda says review for acceptance and consideration, and then my notes say that completeness isn't applicable. I apologize for the typo. He has no acceptance on this. No acceptance. So review. Okay. Is the applicant here? Welcome. Once you're settled in, please introduce yourselves and then tell us about the application. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mark Verostic. I'm a senior project engineer with VHB. I'm here tonight with uh, Eileen Felch of uh, Merrimack Premium Outlets. Uh, as Robert uh, mentioned, uh, we were here uh, back on November 2nd uh, for approval of the amended uh, conditional use permit to allow um, uh, temporary um, uses in the parking lot as well as some permanent uses which included um, a, a drive up ATM, uh, electro electric vehicle charging stations and some um, donation bins on the, on the existing premium outlets. Okay. I do have um, a flash drive with me. I can put the plans up on the screen if, if it helps the board. Yeah, if you'd like to do that, sure. please do. So I did, I did bring with me tonight um, uh, two plans. I have an overall drawing of the project site for orientation if, you know, if we need to see where particular elements are on the project site and yeah. then the, the actual modified site plans which uh, have the zoomed in. For my own benefit, I certainly remember when you were here a couple months ago going over it, but for anybody else's benefit, if you want to give the orientation or the presentation as you designed it, go ahead and do so. Sure. Okay, so the, uh, the changes that are requested are, um, are largely uh, changes that will happen to the in inside the parking lot areas around the site that are shaded in, in blue. 
here. Um, the, there are no proposed, um, there's, there's a proposed uh, ATM drive up structure, but other than that, there's no additional buildings, um, occupied buildings that are, that are being constructed. Um, as, as the board uh, is, is probably aware, the project was originally approved for two phases. Phase two has, has yet to be built on the project, um, which occurs in the uh, northern section of the, of the property here, and there would be a, a parking structure associated with phase two when that comes online. Um, the parking around the project site is um, in excess of what is currently required. Um, the, the current requirement um, is for 2,254 2, parking spaces and 3,092 spaces have been constructed. So leaving uh, an excess of 838 spaces on the project site. Um, Eileen may be able to um, speak to some of the operational um, uh, items for the temporary uses, but uh, as, a, as a national um, company, Simon Premium Outlets um, often have temporary uses um, on their sites that, um, that this uh, project site have, has not been able to um, participate in, and that's, so we're before the board tonight to, to get approval of those. Okay. Um, board members, do you have any questions about what's been proposed? Barbara. Mm -hmm. The only question I had, and understand we've seen the plans that are going in down the road from you uh, for the apartments and the hotel sure. and the traffic circle. So when you talk about having festivals um, or you know big concerts or anything like that, um, I see a lot of traffic coming out of there. So if you've got people who are living down the hill or up the hill from you, uh, how are those people supposed to get in and out if they're, you, you've got a lot of traffic exiting from an event? Um, have you put any thought into that? Because, you know, once you get in, the traffic circle is just going to, that ain't going to help. <laughs> so, you know, how do people get to their homes if you've got an event that's exiting at that particular time? So uh, uh, a couple of things. The the original approval of the Merrimack Premium Outlets um, was for the full build, and the offsite improvements that were um, con that have been constructed, the the widening of Industrial Drive and the signals, um, are all for the full build of of the project. So the um, the current construction um, is you know, is is not is significantly less than, than what's been approved. So there are offsite improvements for traffic that are kind of built into this project. Um, I will say I think one of the conditions of the, um, of the CUP when we were here before was that when phase two comes online, they would have to revisit the approval of these temporary uses. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, again, Eileen could probably speak to it. And I can add to that. So Eileen Felch from Merrimack Premium Outlets. Um, you know, we continue to kind of actively manage the property. And I guess I would say two different kind of examples of how we do that. Like for Black Friday, we have significant traffic in and off, on and off the property. You know, we create full plans imploring Merrimack PD and our allied universal s services that we have on property to really mitigate the vehicular and the pedestrian traffic that comes through their property to ensure that it is orderly and you know conducted well, especially during those peak times. It's just that with the addition of the housing and a hotel, um, it's gonna get interesting. So something to consider for the future as well. Yeah, it's an important concern to have. Um, the original construction for the outlet mall and the, the road that goes in there, I don't remember the exact numbers, but the amount of traffic it's designed to handle is massive. It's like more than a thousand cars an hour or something like that on that on the entry road. So even if you had an event with a couple of thousand people, which is probably all your parking, um, you'd you know 
within an hour or something like that, you'd clear all that traffic. If it if it all ended at once and everybody wanted to leave right at that moment, which sounds like most of the events we described before were more kind of like all day ongoing. People would come and go and enjoy it for a while and then move on. Um, the traffic circle actually will greatly help the people that are trying to turn into the apartments because otherwise they'd be fighting a stream of traffic that doesn't stop that wouldn't and stop. wouldn't yeah. stop and doesn't let them through. So. Um, I know that you've done this before and I keep asking you to do it, but go, go over some of the kinds of events that you're thinking about having and talk that up a little bit. Sure. So this these type of events are very standard for all of Simon Property Groups, including our malls, our mills, and our premium outlets. Um, so to us, really, it's an opportunity to bring kind of refreshing seasonal content to the property. Some specific examples are including farmers markets, classic auto shows, food truck festivals, and then it could be as basic as meeting a need of a COVID testing site or a COVID you know, vaccination site. So those uses kind of flow. But know that you know, at this point, we're not having any firm users or any agreements in place. And you know, for us, it's just, we like to put our retailers first. It is first and foremost a shopping center. And with that in mind, you know, we're trying to enhance it. Thank you for doing that. Other comments or questions? Okay, we don't have to accept it because it's an amendment to a previously approved site plan, uh, but we do do the public hearing. Are there any abutters or citizens who wish to weigh in on what's proposed? Use that microphone right there. Make sure it's turned off. Yeah, it is. Go ahead. Hi, I'm, I'm Jay Gergusky. Uh, I, I'm a resident on Englewood Drive, so I'm abutting against you guys. Um, this was brought up, I think, you know, a month or two ago at this bo at this board meeting, and I left at least um, with the impression that, with regard to like festivals, loud music, fireworks, that kind of stuff, that that would be somewhat within business hours for the property. I, you know, correct me if I left with the wrong perception there, but I just wanted to check if that's still kind of the case, or should I be expecting loud music at like 1 a.m. Sure. Um, so thank you for the comment. Um, we'll get the applicant applicant to respond to it. Um, I hate to sort of be uh, a damper on the back and forth, but the procedure that we have to receive input doesn't allow for direct back and forth. But um, I, I think that you've got the correct perception, and we'll get them to reinforce it with some of their comments here in a second. Okay, thank you. Other comments or questions from the public? Okay, then we'll close the public hearing, allow you a chance to respond to the comment that was received. So, you know, to me, we, like I said, we're, we don't have anybody right now with a solid plan and or a presentation to us. It is something that we would review. Um, typically, we have not done anything that runs super late into the evening. Again, it would be kind of on a case by case basis. We would, you know, review the opportunity. And in addition to us reviewing the opportunity, you know, the fire, they would have to apply through the fire department and they would have to basically come back to you guys with all the different variables of what a specific event might look like. So, you know, I think that is basically done on a case by case basis. So to just to add on to that, um, yep. in addition to, you know, an approval through the board, any any vendors or events would mm -hmm. would have to get a uh, a vendor's license, I believe it's to the, the town manager's office, and, uh, and you yes. know if there's any any items that would require you know fire department or police you know approval as well, it would it would take those. You know, I think you told me last time that you were not would not consider fireworks on your property. I don't know if that is the case or not, and I think that um, actually I've heard some additional information from the fire department that suggests that your property is not particularly well suited for fireworks. So I think at this point, you know, we would look at any option and then partner with, you know, the folks in town to figure out what is kind of the best solution to what's happening. And I think it's hard to give a specific answer because we don't have that type of opportunity in front of us. Like, I don't have anybody asking for it, that right at this very moment. Um, so to say yes or no, we wouldn't is, is kind of a hard answer. Okay. Nelson, you look like you were... Yeah, I, a question. question. I, I was going to ask a question about operating hours. Are there limits on the operating hours of the uh, premium outlets now? Or any? Uh... So operationally speaking, we do set hours um, based on the level of business and, you know, what has been occurring on property as far as shopping is concerned. 
Um, that does vary throughout the year. Um, it does get a little more extended during holiday, but you know there is no. There's no limits on in your approval approvals or anything. So I think it's very market driven. Seven. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Okay, I was wondering if that could be applied here, but uh, we'd have to look at an individual application then to see if it made sense. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, Thank it makes you. sense. Other comments or questions by members of the board? Now what's the will of the board with respect to the proposal? I just had one more question, please. Please do. Um, you, your purple's up there. You know, I'm looking at the uh, lower right-hand side. There's a very large parking lot, and on one edge of the parking lot is uh, has ATMs, I think, or some little sure. bit. Okay. Uh, why is the whole parking lot colored that way see these these uh, sure there's no indication in the plans what's going to go on in all of that spot or what right these so the the colored areas are are kind of outlined as um areas where any one event could take place uh it wouldn't take uh, you know it it was identified you know with with the uh with the owner as places that wouldn't really interfere with their um, with their customers, um, so we just tried to identify general areas where an event would would take place, just to set some parameters so that um, you know so it's easier for them to come in when you know let's say a, a, a automobile maker wants to do a, a car show or or any, any particular vendor wants to come in, they'll be, you know, they'll have to look at these areas. They can go anywhere in that purple spot or right, in those right, purple spots. Right, right. And this area in particular, like you mentioned, is where the uh, where the ATM, you know, we've carved out some parking spaces to allow it for, to be a drive-up ATM there. Yeah. Okay. Other uh, comments or questions? He, he answered my question, basically. Thank you. Uh, if there's no other questions, what's the will of the board? Okay, I will make a motion then to uh, to um, grant approval to this application for uh, additional uses at the site of the Merrimack Premium Outlets. And I don't remember if there were any uh, particular. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a memo without some conditions in it. Yeah, so. that's why I <laughs> might go to those. Um, yeah, there's uh, a memo from yeah, Robert with Price. The, with the, including all of his recommendations in my okay. memo, <laughs> in my, my motion. Okay, motion to grant conditional yeah. final approval subject to the conditions in the memo. Is there a second? Yeah. Second by Mr. Councilor Mr. Chair, Hewitt. can I add an amendment to that as well? I can or discuss stipulation? it with the maker of sure. the motion. That uh, for those events that require separate uh, applications and approval by the town manager are not included in this approval by the board. So, so in other words, they? if they're having a, a food truck festival, they need to work with the town manager to get make sure all the food trucks have been properly uh, permitted. Okay. I think they'll have to do that no matter what we do. Is that right, Robert? That is correct. Okay. The point of this is just to authorize okay. events to take place. After that, whatever shows up has to has get to those be permitted. licenses okay. through them. Just yep. want to make sure. Okay. okay. Well, it's a good Thank good you. catch. We don't yeah. want to uh, yeah. sidestep any of those regulations. No. So the motion as made Second. covers that. Yes. And they still have to go get all their approvals and all that for those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Do we have a second to all the Yeah, oh. uh, Councilor Healy seconded oh, did. your motion. Okay. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero. So you're all set. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I look forward to whatever cool. the first festival is. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Glad to have you in town. What's that? Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's a pitch. Item nine on our agenda is Aubrey Duplees as the applicant and owner review of a conditional use for a level two holistic wellness home occupation. The parcel is located at 66 Tinker Road in the R1 residential by soils and aquifer conservation districts. Tax map 2C, lot 56, 
Case Planning Board 2022-3. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? So this is another application for a conditional use permit for a level two home occupation. Uh, this one, there are a couple of items in going through the criteria as outlined in my memo that need a little bit more information or do not comply with the ordinance as written. So I'd encourage the board to raise those questions, one of them being uh, employees, another one being um, business-related vehicles. That one's pretty minor. But the biggest issue that I came across during review was the, the uh, hiring of outside employees. Uh, which to me puts it into commercial business territory outside of how the limits of a home occupation and what that's intended to do. Um, so I, I would need the board to get some additional answers and clarification on that uh, from the applicant. But outside of that. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Is the applicant here? Once you're all settled in, um, introduce yourself and then tell us about your proposed business. Sure. I'm Aubrey. Can you hear me okay? I can. As you stated, I'm looking to um, be operating a holistic wellness uh, for home occupancy, level two. Um, I do have some clarification on the employee specifically. The commercial vehicle, um, there will be no more than one branded commercial vehicle in the driveway um, just to kind of go over so our hours of operation uh, would be flexible hours because it's appointment only um, no earlier than 9 930 in the morning and probably no later than I'd say 7 at night there might be some exceptions but again it's by appointment um, max number of guests I would assume no more than three people at a time unless we're holding a class um, and I've been talking to the fire department course it would be based on codes with them but um, it was estimated that probably no more than 10 to 12 people based on the 500 square foot rule um, as far as parking there's plenty of parking space already but I have plenty of space to add if needed um, for additional parking um, for the employees I made note in my responses on the application that there would be myself and one other resident uh, so that's two of us that reside at the property and then I mentioned contractors but there would never be more than one contractor um, at a time apparently even though a contractor is not an employee according to the planning board they are is yeah, what it, the um, response said yeah, it's less of a definition about employee versus independent contractor as it is a worker. about how many people from off your property come onto your property to go to work yeah so there would never be more than one at a time for that so tell me about the services that you'll offer and you mentioned three people at a time unless there's a class um, what do you offer and how will that service get delivered so the services would be uh, such as Reiki life coach um, tarot card reading um, hypnosis things to that extent um, for classes things such as uh, organic gardening. Uh, I did a garden chair a couple years ago, for example, just with uh, friends and family and just kind of teaching locals how to garden all naturally and organically, okay. um, things to that nature. Okay. Uh, there's 11 acres on the property, so just really putting the land to use as much as possible and kind of being able to share that in the community. So y you'll teach the classes or? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, going back to the contractors, so for example, if I had um, an organic class to teach, I would probably have a speaker come in and talk a little bit more, um, somebody that's a little more educated than myself, um, my mentor and neighbor, <laughs> probably. Um, but yeah, so things like that, you know, so that would just be the one person that would be coming in off the residence for that one particular day um, to work. Okay. And then you mentioned when it's not a class, maybe three people at a time, and they would be doing the Reiki and <coughs> hypnosis and all those kinds Correct. of things? Correct. Usually it's an hour appointment. Um, so you, I'd have one person in an appointment, for example, and maybe one person in the lobby waiting. Okay. And, and if there were of two of us, sorry, if there's two of us working, then there might be two people in an appointment and two people in the lobby waiting. Okay. 
so when you say two of us working, that would be there. The, somebody else is also doing Reiki or correct. Whatever, correct. all those other things, tarot yes. card reading. Correct. All of that. Okay. So if a client wanted several of those services, how would that work? If they were doing kind of one day, they wanted to do, I don't know what, a couple of those things on your menu. Um, so it just be schedule driven. Uh, you know, obviously there would be a maximum number of schedules, uh, appointments during a day. So we'd either, you could, if you wanted two of the services, for example, you could choose to do those two in the same day. Uh, but that would block off two hours, so somebody else might have to wait till the next day. Or if you wanted to come back two days in a row, just however the schedule would allow. Okay. How does the schedule work with the other independent contractors that are coming to provide those services? So that would only be on a temp like it wouldn't be something that's on the regular having contractors come in. I'd prefer to do the majority on my own. It just would be if I didn't have the expertise. For example, when I was talking about the gardening class and having somebody that knows a little bit more than I do come in to speak to that specific topic. Yeah. But on a regular basis, it would be really just me. Um, I'm trying to, I'm taking a look at the requirement that we have about the number of people from outside that are working there. And um, I get what you're saying about there being one at a time, which certainly satisfies that notion of traffic, at least that piece of it. Um, I don't know if the regulation was getting at anything else in terms of limiting it to one person where, you know, several different colleagues of yours that might come at different times might still be more than is contemplated by a typical home occupation. If I may, staff, staff would think that that does not comply with the purpose and intent of what a home occupation really is because you're still having a rotating schedule of employees. Not everybody goes to a restaurant at the same time who's employed by that restaurant. However, they still have that roster available. It, 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 that to us does not comply with that, what the intent of a home occupation is. So from the staff's viewpoint, the people who live there plus one other human being can come to the property and that's it. So I'm only ever allowed to have one employee? What if that employee didn't in, work out? In a home occupation business. I mean, obviously, if you, you know, terminate your employee and hire a new employee, you still only have one employee. Um, I think, though, having a number of uh, professionals that have different focuses and interests and this person's a a able to come in and um, do one part of your services, and let's say that's the tarot card reader, and mm -hmm. um, the other person is the gardening instructor. Um, the existence of both of those as a part of your services, um, the, the staff's impression is that that brings that outside of the home occupation. Um, and home occupations are always intended to try to draw a balance between allowing people to earn a living versus having impacts on their neighbors. Um, and most of the various requirements that we have all have something to do with um, what impacts it might have on your neighbors. Um, board members, though, d discuss it. What are your thoughts on Nelson? I, I have several questions on this because I couldn't find, there's reference to a garage that's going to be built, but we didn't get any information as to where that was going to be or how that was going to be situated on the site. No, so I don't have a finalized plan as far as the building. Um, in talking to the fire department, I'd like to discuss a little bit further with them, um, have them come out and kind of take a look and see what rec recommendations they might have. I would like Again, there's 11 acres, so I, I'm open to where it might be best for it to be situated. There is a foundation that is still there from a previous barn um, from see, many, see many years ago. See, none of that ago, shows. These activities that you've described, they're going on in the house, in the little It room. would be upstairs in the, um, so it would be a two-car garage with an upstairs room for the space. Oh, it's not in the red house. It's Correct. Okay. Correct. So w we don't really have a, I don't have a picture here of what's. Uh, yeah. Typically, we'd have a sketch of the site or something, a, at least where you. Uh, think that it may go or you have some choices about where, where it would go plus a sketch of what's already there where the driveway is located and all that and 
I know you've mentioned things like having plenty of parking, and I grant you 11 acres ought to hold a lot of cars, <coughs> but I don't know that we see the layout of where that parking would be, and is it lighted, and is it proximate to where um, the activities are going to be, and is it laid out in a way that people wouldn't be backing out into the road, and those are the kinds of things that we look at. And so I have I'm a sure horseshoe driveway, so nobody would hopefully be backing into the road. Yeah. Uh, it's not the safest on Tinker Road, I'm sure you're all aware. Uh, but there is a horseshoe driveway there now. Uh, again, really, my first initial thought was to put it where the foundation is that used to be a barn many years ago. Um, so that is, if you're standing on the road looking at the house, it's to the left. So you There's would pull a into the driveway. There's there now, according to the photographs. There is a uh, carriage house, is what it's called, over kind of... Um, yeah. the other red, that's really close to the road. The red building is the carriage house that you mentioned? The house is red, and then there's a red carriage house, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. and there's several other buildings in behind that. Looks there's like only one other. It's a garden shed, like way out in the back. Um, is that a trailer or something that's parked couple. closer to the... I'm not sure what you're looking at, to be honest. But yes, there is a um, trailer, like on a, wheels. Do you have that one? Or oh, yep. That's a, over to the left. That's a trailer. Yep. That right there. It's a trailer. So that's movable. The foundation's kind of in between that and the house that you're looking at. Okay. There's mention of an outhouse here, too. Yeah, so that's doing the garden chair, what's that? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if doing the garden chair in the summer, it'd be good to have just an outhouse back there. I, to, I don't think we can approve that in New Hampshire, but <laughs> just... Yeah. We don't see that very often. Oh, what? is that different? <laughs> Porta potty? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not going in the ground. Um, I guess verbiage, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that you, you're giving us a picture of what you're proposed, at least in a description, but actually seeing where it would be on the property, like a, a, a sketch or a site plan, not, not like a formally engineered site plan, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, the, the tax map with some sketches on it or something to show yeah. us where things are located or using I can't really use this satellite thing because it doesn't give you any details I can't find anything on that um, that's typically the approach that we would want to see so that we could judge for ourselves you know how all of these things interact like you're suggesting and I'm confident there's solutions to all of it because with 11 acres there's a lot of room but um, it's not a matter of whether they can be solved. It's rather showing us how you solve them, mm -hmm. um, the different challenges. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm more stuck on the idea of the number of people that are coming to the property as independent contractors and all of that because if the board is of a mind to see things the way the staff did, then it's not going to be approvable no matter what you provide to us um, because it's got too many employees coming to it. Um, this is a lot different business, but it's similar to an application we had board members, you may remember, or at least the longer standing board members, the painting contractor on Babusik Lake Road that was having you know people come that were not his employees, but they came and went and were there sometimes and not sometimes. And um, I think we ended up with a determination that that was um, not, was, not, well, right. not what was within the scope of a home occupation. That's what the staff is telling us is their impression of this as well. Um, I'm open-minded to hear an argument about why this is different than that, but. Um. Well, in the holist holistic wellness world, a lot of um, individuals have multiple certifications and experiences under their belt. Um, so for example, I would be doing Reiki and Life Coach and Hypnosis and Tarot Card. Um, that's four things right off the bat that I can name that I would be doing solely. Um, so it would be feasible to also just find one person um, to come in and do other services that outside of my expertise. So that would be something you could commit to in your application is that there would be one employee, one person mm -hmm. from outside that would come regularly to work on your site? Yes. That would certainly help clear up that problem. Would that satisfy you, you guys, Robert, if they're committing to being able to do that? Yep, that would work. Okay. Um, I think 
Um, oh, Barbara, I'm sorry. I didn't mean no to... problem. Clarifying question. Um, is that one employee at a time in the residence? So if she had two employees, but one was scheduled for the morning and one was scheduled for the afternoon, there'd still only be one employee in the house. No. I think Robert's view of that is that it would be beyond the permissible number of employees for a home occupation. Um, and your scenario of one in the morning and one in the afternoon is um, uh, maybe completely different than the way they would come and go from her. Yeah, her I was just to trying to get an idea of yeah. how that yep. was supposed to work according to the, the code. Right. So if you were doing, if you were, if you decided that it meant one at a time, and then you could have people that came in the morning and the afternoon, and different people on the other days, um, well, just one that came in the morning, one that came in the afternoon is four trips by car in and out of the site related to employees, and that's part of the impact on the neighbors. If you had, you know, four people during the day that taught a class in the morning and another one at 11 a.m., another one at 2, another one at 3, um, you'd have eight trips with those four, but it's only one employee, and you start to see how the impact mm -hmm. accrues to the neighbors as a result of it, um, which I think is kind of what's behind the staff's view of the way the regulation plays out. So the answer is one in the morning and one in the afternoon would be two employees and that would be more than is allowed. Other comments or questions by members of the board? I have a question, I guess. Um, when we refer to home occupancy, I always tend to think that it's done in the home. But you had mentioned that you're going to have shared space gardening outside for, um, uh, for your customers. Or community, yeah. Community. Mm -hmm. So how how would that work? You would just anybody or so how I did it uh, in 2018. I actually did it just with friends and family, um, as mentioned, and there were six of us, six families that did it, and we all just pitched in the work, all the labor. Um, I want to say there's probably 300 square feet of garden space outside right now, set up four gardens. Um, so we all just pitched in the labor, and then the amount of work you did, we split the produce accordingly. This would be, this would be associated with the wellness center? Yeah, I mean, it's part of, you know, just kind of holistic wellness, right? Eating organically and learning how to grow and be self-sustainable. Self okay. And um, I, something uh, right here, a future addition would be to add some yurts for the full experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, yurt being uh, like a tent, like a, like a canvas tent, tent or anything like that. Yeah. Are there any? Th is there anything we should be considering about that now? Uh, if, if she says that in the future, that that's, does that change anything of the dynamic of what the home occupancy is and what what's allowable space to to have that? The gross square footage and all, because accessory buildings are allowed, uh, but. In order to do that, she would have to come back at that time when they're ready to go. Because this isn't like a site plan where I've got everything laid out and potential mm -hmm. future expansion. This is kind of different in that here's what we're approving for this moment in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I understand about the square footage. Um, so I believe I have 300 square feet um, slated upstairs of the garage, and then that would leave 200 square feet if that was an yeah. addition. In and the I future. think. Um, I think the community garden and even some of the gardening class type uses um, could be even easier to approve than a home occupation because all the agricultural uses in town are given favorable Indeed, treatment under the regulations and um, that would be almost, it, it may not even be a planning board review for the agricultural pieces, but when you combine the home oc at the same time to do the different things that you've listed in your application, um, then those other things become part of the business and mm -hmm. uh, you're sort of saying I guess, well, what I guess traffic that, goes along with all of it. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking that if you have a shared space garden and people just can come and go and work on that while during your normal business hours, you don't just have two people there. You may have, you know, a couple families plus the two people. So, well, the max number of people there was business. Right. So, I mean, when I did the garden chair in 2018, sometimes there were three of us, sometimes there were six cars. Yeah. You know, we did a um, cookout at the end of the year that year and used all our ingredients from the gardens to cook out and we were all there. Right. So, I mean, it's no more than a 
birthday party <laughs> at my house, you know. I'm just thinking <laughs> on the business end of it. Yeah, if, yeah. If you associate it with it, then we're really counting that many people at your at your business rather than just the two that you right, initially right. had. Yeah, thought. I see what you're saying. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I just want to make sure that it's yeah. not going to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. know if I'm... Well, I think mm-hmm. if we can commit to the idea of having one other person outside the family come into the property to work and the people that are working in the community garden are serving their own interests they're not working for you Mm -hmm. Um, so they don't count maybe they're customers or maybe they're just guests or friends or something Um, I don't know do you charge people to do the community gardening or I haven't Um, I probably would in the future just as far as materials at least um, because it's kind of costly for all of the yeah, I get it. Uh, seeds and soil and yeah. fertilizer. Look, the, the thing that bothers me the most is not seeing the site plan, if you will. The, the, this, the absence of the location of the garage where this all these activities that she's described will take place. Um, it, not having that on the site even kind of bothers me. It's most unusual to just approve it and put it where you want it whenever you <laughs> want. Um, I, I, I'm with you and yeah. 100%, and my thought was that we're discussing some of the other um, details and requirements, but ultimately, in my mind, I was leading towards a continuance to get a drawing from you, you know, and see you in a couple of weeks. Yeah, that's unfortunate because it was never mentioned that uh, it's something that I needed to bring. <laughs> Um, I just, yeah, it's, I mean, it's in the picture. I could show you if you want me to come up there and show you where it would be, but I can do a drawing too and yeah. submit it if that's better. Um, I, the, the pictures are actually less useful than the drawing would be because you see it from the top and you can see how far apart they are and you don't sort of lose that weird perspective in a photograph where you can't tell what's in front of the app. Where the driveways are so and where like, the you know, parking's going to be and, Yep. All the stuff that usually goes with a yeah, with and a little site bit of dimensions. Plan. Robert is I, there. There's no site plan requirement for our home occupations. However, um, do we have anything that encourages people to provide that in certain circumstances, or how would an applicant know when they're supposed to provide that or not? Right. So there's not traditionally requirement because all the stuff usually is held within the home. So this is kind of a, a, a different approach to that. And again, I. I don't really know how protected or how, f- how fully protected, I guess, the agricultural aspect of this would be with the gardening. So I think it's perfectly reasonable if the board feels they do not have enough information for them to ask for whatever it is they would need to feel comfortable with making a decision as they would in any other case. Okay, thank you yeah. for that, Robert. Um, I've got a few thoughts, but let's see what other board members have for any comments or discussion from the applicant? Brian. So uh, is this a business that you're starting right now or is this on something that's been occurring? What, oh, it's just starting. Okay. You mean have I been having you know, like services? doing Reiki and life coaching and stuff and charging? No, just practicing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, from, I guess, my perspective, I, I felt a lot of these things, the hypnosis, the tarot, the Reiki, everything minus the gardening, I thought you could do, you know, at potentially a commercial or some sort of retail outlet. Mm-hmm. Um, have you given any thought to that? Well, yeah, <laughs> but that takes away from the gardening and land sure. aspect of it. Understood. Okay. Other comments or questions? So the business the, the, that you're going to do doesn't happen immediately no matter what we do you got to go build this garage right correct Um, so you're not doing it in the house as a temporary until we get to the point where you've built the garage um no it's not really set up for room for that to be honest yeah neither is my house I don't (laughs) like people in there either um what was your time frame for wanting to get the garage built ideally first thing in the spring you got your contractor and plans and all that stuff. Uh, I've so had a couple know. estimates I haven't chosen, but. Okay. 
if you're going first thing in the spring, then it wouldn't necessarily kick you back too much if we saw you in a couple of weeks with a plan. Um, I don't want to put you out of uh, um, time with what you've got for a business plan any more than we absolutely have to. Um, but I think it is pretty important for us to see the diagram mm -hmm. of what's going to go on in the property. And I want to find out what the staff thinks of the agricultural uses and how our regulations apply to those. And I, I almost wonder whether this is two home occupations, whether they're part of the same occupation or whether they're two separate things. Um, and I know that for your viewpoint, that your clients are kind of looking for all of the things on mm -hmm. the menu and they are pretty well related. And I think I could be persuaded of that. Um, but initially sort of community gardening might be something that somebody is interested in doing that doesn't have any interest in any of the rest of these services. Right. They just think, what a great opportunity. I live in an apartment and there's no garden near me. Why don't I use yours? Um, yeah, to be honest, I've been kind of wondering the same and um, it was just a matter of coming in front of all of you and it's really right. having that same conversation because nobody has an answer <laughs> about whether it's one thing agricultural or, or <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah yeah to that end I think we'd need to research that with legal counsel and figure out exactly where it falls and how much jurisdiction we have over that aspect of it yeah. and I'm inclined to be fairly flexible and expansive with looking at what's agricultural I I know that there's some towns that have looked at things and they've decided that the agritourism isn't agricultural and all of that, and I don't really want to go down that path. I think we ought to be um, as uh, welcoming as we can to the agricultural uses, um, but I just don't know. I've, I've ne it's been a, I don't think planning board's ever heard a agricultural use application, have we? Well, the Christmas tree farm. The Christmas yeah, tree farm, true. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Be a question. Yeah. Oh, that's true too. Yeah. Which um, one was that? There's a horse horse, horse training facility oh, that we had not that long ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so we ha we have had a few opportunities to to take a look at that. Although I don't know in what way those applications were affected by the favored status of right. agricultural uses. Right. Um, so the statutes basically say that agricultural uses are permitted. That's why they can occur anywhere. However, planning board has jurisdiction over them. So for the, the case of the equestrian farm, the riding lessons are protected, protected use. They could happen anywhere in the community, but the planning board has the right to impose that site plan uh, designation upon it. So that's why they can control the parking and the uh, uh, things like that. Okay. Um, this being home occupation level, that's where I, I don't know how that applies anymore. So, uh, hypothetically, um, Robert, I know it's kind of hard to catch you on the spot with that, but a completely agricultural business like an apple orchard that has people come in the fall and they mm -hmm. pick apples and they got a little shop and they sell maple syrup and stuff like that, and they might have 10 people come at a time, customers, and they might even have employees, um, 10 employees. Um, none of that fits into home occupation. That's all agricultural, and all we're doing as a planning board then is saying the parking lot's wide enough and it's got lights and traffic the, flow. All it's the all basic. happy. Yep. So, for theoretically, then if that applied to the, her, then whatever employees she had associated with the agricultural use count or don't count would be in separate. This from mess. That. Yeah, that's. I guess we need a little it? answers. Yep. Um, okay. It would sort of have to count, since we're doing both on the same site, we've got this other use coming in that uh, is not agricultural. You know, this garage with its uh, overhead uh, upstairs uh, room for classes and so on, that's all got to fit with this, so the whole thing's got to come together. Well, it's, yeah, a, it's certainly in terms of site plan and is there enough parking plan, and all that, yeah. but as to the question about whether she's got more than one employee, they don't count as to the, they're not the employees of the home oc, they're employees of the agricultural business. Um, That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Potentially, and I don't they're know whether there are any employees. employees, I don't know whether it makes any sense. These, sure. are, these are just her friends who come over, they're not even employees. <laughs> well, <laughs> they could be, yeah, but... Well, that um, was the one example that I used earlier, having somebody come to teach a gardening class, right? Mm -hmm. So, 
Right, and that may be something that... Um, or somebody to come do the dirty work of tilling the gardens because I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's absolutely yeah. true. If you have yeah. uh, you know, somebody that you hired to come over and turn over the soil in the spring and get it all ready, uh, but that does not count as an employee of the home occupation because yeah, it's would, not... I don't know, maybe. Um, I would say not. How do we get the answer, Robert? I'll have to pose the application to uh, legal counsel and see how this fits in what we have jurisdiction over since it's not a site plan level uh, or being proposed as a site plan level type of type of uh, application. Um, okay. How long does it take to get that? Depends on their schedule and how fast they can get back to me. Um, either way, we would then, your board wants something some sort of a layout sketch to, to look at yes. externally yes. anyway. So feasibly, assuming the applicant can put something together like that in about a week's time, uh, they could turn that in and we for the January 11th typical uh, submittal deadline. That way we have time to review that for the February 1st meeting. I have it drawn up at home. I just didn't bring it because I wasn't asked to bring that. So no, yeah, I can do that. that. Um, so, yeah, that's unfortunate you didn't have it uh, available for us. We're going to get it for next time. Um, we still would have had to pause to get this other information yeah. anyway, yeah. so it's actually going to work out okay to do that. Um, in the sketch that you have, and you know, bring enough copies for everybody and stuff for the staff, show all of the buildings that are already on the property, where the driveway is and all that, where you think the garage is going to go. Um, okay. And um, I don't think that we're in a present... Uh, enough information to talk about yurts. Um, those would have to be approved separately okay. whenever you're ready to, to build those. Yeah. If you wanted approval now for yurts in the future, you got to draw them on the plan, and then we've got to do this calculation. And since you're already in the high 200s or 300 or so for your square footage, you really don't have a lot, much room for right. much uh, on, in, in the way of a yurt. Um, even a 15 foot one would put you over the um, limits on square footage. Um, how do, how do, how would a yurt add to the experience that people have with your services that you're offering? Um, it could be a couple ways. Um, so if you're getting a Reiki session, you could do it out in the yurt, which would be closer to the woods area as opposed to the driveway and the road. Um, and working out in the woods, kind of cleaning up the woods and making it more, you know, walking paths and things like that. So they could kind of it, add that into their experience, you know. Would they be overnight type of facilities? I haven't thought about overnight, yeah. like just yeah. for service purposes, really. Yeah. I think it would make a difference. So that could yeah. add some overnight complexity. Overnight, yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. it's already with the agricultural versus... Yeah. business I knew that was going to be a question yeah absolutely so. um, okay uh, before we necessarily wrap up all of our discussion on these things we haven't um, offered the public any opportunity to weigh in are there any abutters or citizens who wish to weigh in come on forward man you want to use this microphone or you want to come up to the table or okay For, introduce um, yourself Casey Markell, and I'm her next door neighbor, and um, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. She has had people there when she was doing the gardening, and there was no problems with traffic or anything like that, really. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think she's got a really good idea, and I think it's something that would fit in this town, give people a place to go. Like, So I don't know how else to say it. Chill out, maybe, you know. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm all for it. I think it's a great idea. I don't know what else to say. Thank you so much for, you. for saying some positive things about your neighbor and her business. <laughs> Other comments or questions from abutters? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Um, I can say, uh, as the chair of the planning board, when we ask, ask for public testimony, you usually have people that are opposed to a thing. Um, rarely you get people that are positive. To have, Two positive people speaking yeah. for their neighbors in one <laughs> night with nobody opposing. It's a new year. That's, uh, <laughs> maybe that says good things about 2022. That's uh, the energy. Can I, can I get the abutters address for the record, please? Um, 62 Pinto. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, so let's uh, 
uh, continue till February 1st. Bring us back a plan, submit it to the department so they can mail it out to us. Uh, submit it by the 11th of January so that they can get it out to us. Okay. Um, add in whatever you've got that isn't already on there that was on the list. Um, to the extent that you know the dimensions of things and how far things are apart, um, write that on there. Okay. Um, and uh, if part of your driveway is paved and part of it isn't, sort of draw the line where the distinction is for that, where your okay. gardens are and that sort of thing. Um, so that we've got this complete information. Um, err on the side of putting it on there because the more you have, the more we can see and you won't have something we go, oh, we wanted to see the right. who knows what. And it's okay. not there. Lightning. Um, and then we'll have the, the staff get in touch with our, our legal counsel to get it figured out about how these kind of different uses all gel together. Okay. Um, and we'll get some more information. Robert, was there any other information that you thought needed to be more fully developed in our discussion today? Uh, no, the biggest ones walking into it were the the employee issue and the vehicles, and she, she clarified the vehicles right away. And uh, as, as long as the, the new submittal can clarify the employees, then that, that would address my concerns. Okay. With that in mind, uh, is there a motion by the board? I'll make a motion to that effect to... Uh, are we going to postpone this? We're going, We're going to continue, continue to, February, it to 1st. February 1st. Okay, to allow the applicant to prepare a more complete site plan for our review and address the uh, uh, us to address with legal counsel the separation and approvals of uh, agricultural versus non agricultural uses. So Is there a second for Nelson's motion? Did I get it? <laughs> I heard, I heard Brian. <laughs> Brian's first. Brian. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero. Hey, it was a pleasure meeting you, and thank, thank you for you telling us about your business. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Yes. Thank you. All right. We got an agenda here somewhere. Okay. Uh, number ten on our agenda is Anheuser Busch Commercial Strategy LLC as the applicant and owner. Review for consideration of final approval for a waiver full site plan review to reestablish the use of two existing buildings as six residential units for employees and contractors. The parcel is located at 221 Daniel Webster Highway in the I-1 Industrial and Offer Conservation Districts, Tax Map 3D, Lot 31, Case Planning Board 2022-5. Robert, is there anything that we need to know before we hear from the applicant? This application is an effort to reestablish the former residential use on the property. As everybody's likely aware, there was a residential use on the property related to the Clydesdales when they were still on the property here. That property, when the horses went away, the residential use also went away. That residential use was a legal non-conforming use that was never, you know, formally approved or whatnot. So they when the Clydesdales left and the use was abandoned, it was left for longer than one year, so therefore it was considered abandoned. The applicant had to go to the ZVA to get the variance to get it reinstated, which they did, and are now coming here to get it reestablished. All right. Thank you for that introduction, Robert, and thank you for coming. Um, boy, I wish there was an easier path to have gotten to this goal for <laughs> you. Hadn't you? Please introduce yourself and tell us what's up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Tom Hildreth. I'm outside counsel to Anheuser-Busch at the McLean Middleton Law Firm in Manchester. I have Scott Hoffacker, who's a facilities uh, engineer at the plant uh, here locally, and Ethan Beals, who's a civil engineer with uh, Hayner Swanson, who prepared uh, the plan. Um, and Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'd like to just hand out a- Yes, please. Let me have you um, reintroduce what the picture is from a microphone so the folks at home didn't miss that part. So this is a, uh, a Google Earth image that uh, focuses in on the portion of the property that um, Anheuser Bush refers to as the Hamlet. Um, this is the little collection of buildings that you can see here. Um, you know, the picture is approximately oriented north-south. Um, the large building at the bottom of the picture uh, are the stables, um, and then there are two uh, rectangular buildings that each measure 
uh, roughly uh, 20 feet by 80 feet um, that are the two kind of mirror image um, apartment uh, uh, complex buildings. Um, each of those two apartment buildings contain three apartments. They're about 1,200 square feet, two bedrooms, one bathroom. Um, they're not fancy, um, and they're not going to be fancy, but they're uh, going to be uh, a place where people who are moving to the facility or visiting temporarily um, will have a place to stay until they find um, more lasting uh, quarters. Um, and as Robert mentioned, we're seeking waiver of uh, the full site plan. And um, if you look at, uh, Ethan, if you throw up the first picture, the, uh, the picture of the overview of the parcel, this is a nearly 200 acre uh, tract and, and the plant itself is really uh, at the north end of the property. The south end of the property is, is largely undeveloped and wooded. Um, and the hamlet you can see is kind of like dead center in the middle. Um, and it's about two acres of the uh, nearly 200 acres. So we're talking like 1% of the whole. Um, and, and we think that the, uh, the information that's provided here is, is more than adequate to you know, fairly review the plan. And, and it would be a hardship to you know, have to do a full site plan of, of a parcel that's this, this, this large. Um, there are no exterior changes proposed. Uh, and as a bush has been maintaining the property, uh, mowing the lawn and plowing the uh, parking lot and keeping it lighted and, and so on and so forth. Um, and they'll just continue to do that, you know, as they're uh, able to put people in these apartments on temporary basis. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, board members, our first task is to decide whether the application is complete and to accept it for review. What is the will of the board? Nelson. I would so move, Mr. Chairman, uh, to accept the plan as complete. Is there a second? Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero. Uh, applicants seeking a waiver of full site plan review. Does the board have any discussion with the applicant uh, before taking up that question? No, I would, Nelson? I would move to a, to waiver the requirement for a full site plan review. Um, based because on which of the Based on the hardship it would cause the owner to survey such a huge piece of property for this okay. minor change. Okay. So strict conformity would pose a necessary right. hardship. Is there a second for Nelson's motion to waive full site plan review? Second. second by Brian. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Uh, there's nobody else in the room, but are there any abutters or interested citizens who <coughs> wish to weigh in? Hearing none. Uh, there's, uh, that concludes our public hearing piece of it. Board members, do you have any discussion with the applicant on what's proposed? I do, there's no change to the facility at all? Uh, to the there's no change to the structure? Not though? to the exterior. We, we've already had the, uh, the building inspector and the fire department down, and there are some minor upgrades being made as a result of that. You know, Wi-Fi improved, um, uh, fire extinguisher, fire um, <coughs> smoke detector uh, system upgraded. We're mm -hmm. uh, checking the uh, plumbing on uh, gas fixtures and so forth and replacing water heaters and things like that. Um, you know, none of them were you know, kind of uh, of a deficient nature. The, the history here is that from roughly the early 70s until, you know, 2019, they were continuously occupied and happily so, um, but they were, you know, 1970s vintage, uh, you know, uh, facilities. And so we're kind of bringing them up to, you know, current code. And these are just primarily for the employees or, like you said, people transferring from other locations that are waiting, right. looking for temporary housing? That's right. Yeah. So it's just solely for that. Right. Yeah. Whereas it used to be the people that were tending to the Clydesdales. That's right. What's going on in the Clydesdale paddock, the old stable? Uh, no plans. It's just an empty stable. Do something cool with it. Yeah. <laughs> Do something cool with it. Uh, it, it was a great uh, venue for my, my son's graduation. Yeah. So, yeah. And we, we like that aspect of it. But. In the stables. Uh, outside of the stables. Just outside the stables, but we were able to go in and, and look. And the I tradition think. of the high school to have the graduation pictures yeah. in front of the stables. Yeah. Makes me wish I had gone to visit the Clydesdales more often when they were here. <laughs> right? I, I uh, was hoping they were coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I did bring that up, and everybody liked that. Yeah, everybody <laughs> yeah liked we voted for that twice. Yeah. yeah. For that twice. But we understand. Um, if there's no further discussion by the board, uh, is the board prepared to take final action? I am, Mr. Chairman. Nelson? Yeah. 
uh, oh, no. conditional final okay. approval subject to the conditions in the memo? Yes. Is there a second for that? Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero. Thank, thank you, you very much, and thank you for waiting for Thanks 9 for, yeah. for a relatively yeah. short yeah. presentation. Thank, thank you all. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to see it being used, too. It was a nice-looking facility, the whole thing, the way they built it and all. Yeah. 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 Even if they're rather rather plain inside, they look kind of really cool from the outside. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, thank you very much. Thank well, you thank very you. much. Okay. Attorneys are jumping from firm to firm so fast I can't even keep up with it either. It's <laughs> a great resignation. At least you guys haven't poached any of our, our lawyers lately. So. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Uh, item 11 is discussion possible action regarding other items of concern. Um, I have a uh, request from Bowler Engineering related to um, Thomas More College looking for us to extend our uh, period of time to allow for the conditions of approval to be met by another six months. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? second. If there's no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Six zero zero. Um, I don't have any other discussion or possible action regarding other items of concern. Does anybody else have any discussion and possible action regarding other items of concern? Oh. That's it. I'll Welcome, Brian. <coughs> Thank you. Hey, Brian. Welcome. When we have shorter meetings, especially in the summer, we sometimes sneak off for a beer after. We're a little too late tonight. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's winter. Late. Um, I thought we'd go longer than that. That would have been a better welcome than just having a long board meeting. Next time. Okay, if there's no other discussion items, uh, the approval of the minutes of December 21, 21 are before us. What say you? So moved. Is there second. a second? Motion and a second to approve the minutes of December 21, 21 with no changes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? One abstention, Neil Ancatel. Otherwise, they are approved. That concludes all the business on our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? Five zero zero. We're adjourned. Don't forget to turn your microphones off. And thank you all for all the work. <laughs>